The house I grew up in was haunted by a little girl. So the house I grew up in was most definitely haunted. My parents bought the land from a farmer, and we built and are the only ones to live in the house. It was a huge house on five acres of land that backed up to the woods. For years we never had issues, until my dad finished the basement. He turned the basement into a big movie room on one side and a workout slash game room on the other. Obviously, my brothers and I started spending a lot of time down there, because it was like our own private movie theater. The lights down there would sometimes randomly flicker, but we all choked that up to bad wiring, because my dad did it himself. Occasionally, the TV would change channels while we were in the middle of a movie, and it would always change to some sort of kids' channel, Cartoon Network, Disney, Nickelodeon. This led to a lot of sibling fights and blaming each other for sitting on the remote. After that happening a few times, we started setting the remotes on a table in the middle of the room, but the TV would still change channels. At this point, my siblings and I were convinced something was down there, but my parents kept ignoring it. Once when I was about 10, I had just gotten home from school and was home alone. I was being a good child and started doing my chores, one of which was cleaning out my hamster's cage. I was walking out to the garage with the cage in one arm, hamster and her ball in the other arm, when I heard our front door open and slam shut and stomping footsteps going up the stairs. This was weird because no one ever used our front door. Everyone went through the garage. I called out thinking it was one of my brothers but got no answer. I set my hamster down to go check the door. It was still locked. I panicked, grabbed the house phone and called my mom while I sprinted to our neighbor's house. My mom rushed home from work and found no one was there and we still can't explain what I heard. Another time my best friend slash neighbor and I decided to camp out in my front yard. We were about 11 and too scared to go in the woods alone. We had just gotten our tent all set up with our sleeping bags and lanterns and had just laid down to read some magazines as the sun went down. Suddenly we hear what sounded like a little girl singing. We both stop reading and stare at each other trying to think of who that could be because we were the only young girls that lived in the neighborhood. The sound started coming closer and sounded like it was right outside of our tent. We both got chills and goosebumps. We both screamed and sprinted inside as fast as we could without looking back. I can still hear the sound of that singing to this day. Nothing creepy happened for a few years after that, just a typical lights flicker and channels changing. Then when I was 14, I had my volleyball team over for a sleepover. A few of them knew about the ghost haunting my house, so they brought a Ouija board for the night. Of course, I had to do it and find out who was haunting my family. First try, almost as soon as our fingers touched the planchette, it started moving. We asked typical questions like, what's your name? Are you going to hurt us? Why are you here? We only got no as our answer to those. I then asked, Are you a little girl? The planche had moved to yes. Me? Did you live on this land before me? Her? Yes. Me? How did you die? Her? Spelled out fire on the board. Just after that, one of my friends freaked out and knocked the board over, saying that someone touched her shoulder. My friends and I tried to look up if anything happened on the property before my family bought it. 
we did find out that there was a barn fire years before we bought the land, but the daughter of the family who owned it grew up and moved away. We couldn't find anything about a girl dying in the fire. My dad sold the house years later, but my brothers and I were talking about it recently, and I told them what happened with the Ouija board. One of my brothers freaked out and said it made so much sense. One night he fell asleep in the basement and woke up in the middle of the night. There was a little girl standing in the doorway. He thought it was me, so he just said, go away, and went back to sleep, only to realize the next morning that I was at a friend's house for a sleepover. I don't know if the new owners have had any similar experiences since living there. I'm just thankful, as far as ghost encounters go, our ghost was pretty harmless. My only ghost encounter. I get a lot of anxiety thinking about this memory, but when I was a little girl, my whole family had finally gotten into the car for a trip to the store. I realized I was going to need my sweatshirt and begged my mom to let me back inside. She unlocked the door and told me to hurry up. I ran through the entire house and ran to the end of the hallway where my room was. I stopped dead in my tracks, not even entering as normal because I felt the energy was shifted. I opened my door and looked up, and my desk chair was in the middle of the room, spinning, and my ceiling fan was spinning in the exact same speed and in unison. I remember my tiny hand on the cold doorknob and the feeling of holding my breath, but that choking feeling in your throat. They both stopped immediately at the same time, the chair spinning a tiny bit, gravity adjusting itself. I remember running back through the house like someone was actually after me. I basically threw myself into the car, petrified. And my mum was saying, where's your sweatshirt? And I barely said a word. I assume they thought I couldn't find one. I remember the whole ride to the store. I kept thinking about how that was the one time I actually pushed my chair into my desk before I left. By the time we got home, I forgot all about it. Because that's what's great about being a kid. I've gotten awful vibes from places where the energy is rancid and you feel someone looking even though there's no one. But never anything like that ever again in that house or anywhere else. I'd appreciate anyone who might want to share a similar story or your opinion on my experience. Something tried luring me into dark rooms. When I was a kid, my mom and I lived with my grandparents in their three-story house. It had a basement, a ground floor and a second floor. To give context, there was a living room directly in front of the stairs leading upstairs. So you could see my mom's room on the left, important for later, and my grandparents' room on the right. My room was further down a second-story hall, but I spent a lot of time alone and with my uncle in the basement. For more context, the basement was a huge rectangle, with one room directly to the left of the stairs, my uncle's room, and one room in the far back left corner, storage room, also important for later. With context out of the way, time for the actual story. This all happened when I was eight or nine, can't remember exactly, it was around when Halo 3 came out. The first time it happened is honestly the worst. I was homesick from school, in reality I just wanted to play Halo bro, but everyone in the house worked so I was alone, 
and my uncle was at school. The only Xbox in the house was in the basement. So naturally, when everyone left, I got up and went to play Halo. I'm down there for a few hours, playing games happily. And all of a sudden, the storage room I mentioned earlier creaks open ever so slightly. Not completely, just enough to see a slit of darkness. And plain as day, I hear my mum call me from what sounded like the furthest corner of the storage room, saying she needed help putting something away. My mum wasn't home at the time, and I knew this. I didn't turn anything off. I bolted upstairs and laid on the couch until my uncle got home from school. He asked why I left the Xbox on, and he thought I was sick, and laughed at me. I just laughed back and said, My bad. Won't happen again. The only other time this happened was actually during a family dinner. We had cousins and pretty much our entire family over for a holiday. My cousins and I were playing with nerve guns in the living room. They got hungry and went to get more food, so I sat by myself in the living room, reloading my magazines with darts, when something caught my eye upstairs. Same year as last encounter. I'm still eight or nine in this scenario. It was my mom's room door. It had opened and, because it was like 8 p.m., it was dark upstairs, because no one was up there, so no lights were on. But my mom had walked out from the darkness and kind of waved me over to her, with a weird smile on her face. I yelled to her, why? And she just kept waving me over. But I clearly saw my mom, so I didn't question her again, and started walking over. But as I got to the start of the stairs, I looked to my right, and saw my mom talking with my aunt at the dinner table. So I walked over, and asked if she had been upstairs, and she said no. Went back to the living room, looked up the stairs, and her door was closed again. Nothing like that ever happened again, but it still gives me the chills when I think about it. I stayed at the old citadel in Charleston, South Carolina, without knowing it was incredibly haunted. I had a work trip in Charleston, so I booked an embassy suite, and the old citadel seemed like a nice property in a convenient location. My fiancé found out it used to be a civil war armory or something like that. He was loving the history aspect of the hotel too. We had a nice southern dinner in one of the most beautiful cities in the country in our opinion. And when we went back to the hotel, everything seemed fine. We got ready for bed, watched some Netflix, planned our next day, and turned the lights off to go to bed. My fiancé passed out instantly, and I dozed off, but I felt the weirdest pressure consuming my body, like I had a ton of bricks on me. I've heard of sleep paralysis before, but have never had it in my life. I opened my eyes and saw the darkest looking figure in the corner of our room. I was completely frozen and couldn't speak. I don't know if I was frozen in fear or if it was something else. I kept staring at the figure to see if it would move. And it looked like after a few minutes it just faded away into the corner it was in. I was still frozen and once I was able to move. I snuggled up with my fiancé and got my phone and looked up the hotel and saw it was named one of the most haunted hotels in the entire South. After snuggling with my fiancé and being mostly under the covers, I fell asleep. I told my fiancé what happened and he said he had really, really dark dreams, which is rare for him so something was really fishy. 
We asked the hotel staff at breakfast if the hotel was haunted, and they laughed and just said, I'm not going to touch that topic. We had another five days of our stay, and I was so scared to sleep, but it never happened again. Does this seem like a haunting? Or just sleep paralysis and a weird coincidence that he had scary dreams that same night too. Could it have been anything? I know that city, although beautiful, has a very, very dark history. Edit. I forgot to mention this was like 2 to 3 a.m. and the room felt very cold. And when I was able to get to my phone to do some research, the hotel Wi-Fi, which was typically very fast, was painfully slow, to the point where I needed to use regular data to use the internet, and even that was unusually slow for a bit.